The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake, the lake of Gennesaret, in other words, the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we Dear friends and family in Christ, may God's grace, his mercy and peace be to you from the one who was, who is, and who is to come, our Savior Jesus, who is Christ. Amen. I think that you would agree with me that there is a lot of unholiness going on today. The news is full of it. We see it at work. We see it at play. Nothing shocks us anymore. Compared to the evil that we see around us, I would think our sins seem kind of tame. How can Jesus get our attention in things like this? What would Jesus have to do to get the attention of the people in Lebanon? What would happen if Jesus came to Lebanon? Came right now, today. What would happen if he brought the power of his holiness into our midst right here, right now? Well, I kind of doubt that we'd crucify him. At least I hope not. We'd probably just, well, tolerate him. Ever thought about that? He would say, well, or excuse me, we would say, well, you know, he's entitled to his opinion. Ever hear that before? And then we'd probably just ignore him. That's how it's gotten to be. But in today's story, Peter didn't ignore Jesus. Peter obeyed Jesus. Jesus asked something of Peter that was all the same, both small and great. Jesus asked Peter, a professional fisherman, to go out into the deep water and throw the nets over for a catch. That was a small thing. Peter had done that a thousand times. In fact, Peter had done it that very night and had caught nothing. You see, to ask a fisherman to let down the nets is simply to ask him to do what he does, to be what he is. And no fisherman can survive unless he lets down his nets. That's just 
his job. That's how he makes his livelihood. And Jesus asks, asks something very small of Peter at that point. But at the same time, Jesus asks Peter to do something great. Peter and his friends had been fishing all night. They hadn't caught a thing. And someone might ask, are the fish biting? How many fishermen do we have here? Or nowadays, I guess we have to say fisher people. Okay, we got a few people that are, that are fisher, fishermen. Uh, well, Peter would say, uh, no, they weren't biting. We can enjoy our work if we see results. You agree with that? Yes, no, don't care? Okay. But you see, that particular night, uh, Peter and his friends had seen no results. So, well, they'd gotten schnookered. They, they'd skunked. They weren't, they weren't having one of those $100 nights. Uh, they were really kind of suffering. They were having one of those $5 nights, and they were pretty disgusted. They were, they were tired, probably grumpy, as they were cleaning their nets and fixing them. And so Peter is tired. He's discouraged, probably worried a little bit, but more than anything, he's ready to go home. He wants to be home. I've had it for tonight. So Jesus in the boat, he says, Peter, <laughs> why don't you go out here in the deep and uh, let down the net, nets for a catch? Now, can you imagine Peter? You know, he's, he's discouraged, he's disgusted. They, maybe they've been arguing amongst themselves as, as fishermen and saying, you know, well, it, you didn't do something right, or you missed that throw, or whatever the case may be. But um, he's asking kind of a small thing, but not really a small thing of Peter. You can see Peter kind of rolling his eyes and saying, oh, well, okay. At your word, I will let down the nets. And if you remember from last week, the word, what the word means, the word is powerful. Okay, well, Jesus is, at this particular time, he is exercising his word once again. He's asking Peter to do something, and then his word is going to do another thing. It's going to be a miraculous word. So Peter did a large thing and got some large results. Jesus was asking Peter to believe in his presence. Here I am with you. Peter may have heard about Jesus. At this particular point, we're not told. But that's beside the point. The point is that they were hearing what Jesus was speaking to the people. And when Jesus said, come and follow me, I will make you fishers of men. You notice what happened. His word had this authority. It was a sweet word. It was something that they could not resist, and they abandoned everything. Zebedee was, uh, you know, Dad Zebedee was left with the, the, the rest of the crew, and the rest of them just quit fishing, and they went following. Jesus does really the same kind of thing with us nowadays. He's asking something small, and that is to trust so that we can accomplish something big. What he's asking is that you trust him. And in many ways, perhaps that's not a small thing. But what he's doing is he's inviting us into a relationship that says, Trust me, there's something coming that is very exciting. You're going to see results. Not that results is the all in all, but you're going to see what faith does in action. And so they made this transition from being professional fishermen to people who would be catching other people. The net would be thrown out. The net of God's word. 
and people would be drawn in. Now, you can only take that analogy so far, right? Because you take the fish out and you eat them. Well, Jesus is, is not saying that you're catching people to eat them. You're catching people so that Jesus can clean them up. And they become a food for others. They share the word of God. They are bringing an authority, a sweetness, an invitation. Jesus asks each and every one of us to do something small, and that is to follow. Well, you know, you'd say, no, that's no small thing to follow Jesus. But Jesus doesn't say, uh, just take big steps right off the bat. He's inviting us to take small steps to follow him. And as we learn, and as we trust, then we take the bigger steps. It's kind of like that, um, that little story that uh, talk about where the, uh, uh, well, it was a snowy day, and uh, uh, church was beginning, and in comes this farmer. And uh, the, the preacher says, well, looks around, there's just this one farmer. And uh, he said, well, shall we have service? And uh, the farmer said, well, you know, uh, when I'm feeding the cattle, if one cow comes, I feed it. So he preached, and 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 he preached some more. And then afterwards, as they were shaking hands to say, go, he says, well, uh, how was the sermon? And he says, well, when uh, one cow comes, I don't feed him the whole load. <laughs> Uh, the farmer could see the big picture. The preacher is only narrow <laughs> on one thing. That is, boom, got a captive, one audience, and I'm going to go for broke. And uh, it, so you see that uh, when we are invited into this relationship, it's, it's a small thing initially, but it becomes a big thing eventually. Got a little story here that talks about uh, seeing the big picture, and, uh, and I know that this will... Um, yeah, I got to find it here. I thought I knew it by heart, but I don't, so I'm not going to trust myself. Okay, uh, when, when Jesus talks about inviting us into a small thing, he's helping us to get uh, uh, not only to have the focus uh, where we see Jesus, but to begin to expand and to see what he sees in the overall picture and how we as fisher people, fishermen, uh, draw people in, okay? Uh, before he moved to New York, Reggie Jackson played for the Baltimore Orioles. I know that perks up somebody's attention over here. And the manager, Earl Weaver, had a rule that no one could steal a base unless given the steal sign. This upset Jackson because he felt that he could judge when to steal. So Jackson got a jump off the pitcher and he beat the throw to second base. He shook the dirt off his uniform and he was smiling. He had proven that he knew when to steal a base. Later, Weaver took Jackson aside and explained why he had not given the steal sign. First, the batter was Lee May, a great power hitter. All right, what happened to my other page? Ah, okay. There you go. That's what I get for putting notes, because so often when I'm doing notes, I just kind of get lost. But anyway, that's the way it goes. So when Jackson stole second, he left first base open. The other team walked May intentionally, eliminating his chance to hit a big run. Second, the batter wasn't as good. The next batter wasn't as good. So Weaver had to use a pinch hitter to try and drive in the men on base. That left Weaver without bench strength later in the game when he needed it. The problem was that Jackson saw only his piece of the game. Weaver saw the whole game. And so when we are being drawn in by Jesus, too often we only see a piece of the game, but God sees the whole game. And so when God sends us a signal, we need to obey it, no matter how smart we think we are. And so Peter understood this, 
And so he said, if you say so, if you say so. And as a result, God was able to use him for a greater thing. And once Peter said, if you say so, he began to work by God's power, not by his own power. Once Peter said, if you say so, God turned to him into a powerhouse. So, when we're talking about the little and the great things, what is it that, that God wants you to do? What is the one little thing that he'll turn into a great thing? Where do you fit in society? Where are you within this body of Christ? What is that one simple small thing that Jesus calls you to do that he will turn into a great thing as you do it? We need to be like Peter, you see, and that is when Jesus says, trust me, we say, if you say so. You want me to do this? If you say so, I will. It's that whole thing is trust and obey, isn't it? So what is it that God is asking you to do? What's that one small thing? It has to be something fantastic and great and have super insights and whatnot. But to be faithful in who you are, who, who God has called you to be, and to do that one thing. This morning we were talking about uh, Dorcas, uh, who is also known as Tabitha, and she was one who uh, made clothing and she helped widows. Uh, she did all kinds of things because of her faith. And people saw that. For her, it was a small thing because she enjoyed doing it. She had met the Lord. She knew the Lord. She trusted the Lord. She loved the Lord. And so as a result of her faith, she was helping other people. But she was doing it in the background. God had called her to do this one small thing. But it was a huge thing. It was a great thing for the people whose lives were touched. What do you see in your life that you say, well, what I can do is so insignificant. It doesn't really matter, you know. What, what, what's the big deal about what I can do? Well, if you do it to the glory of God, if you trust Jesus and you say, if you say so, you can glorify God in whatever it is that you do. You can be one who is uh, great at hospitality. We got lots of folks in this congregation that are good at that. And you see a lot of that happening, not only here, but as you encounter one another. Want to be a good host or hostess. Want to make sure that people are comfort, comfortable and welcomed. And that bleeds over into this place. We have others who have, just by their presence, a calming effect on people. You ever had somebody do that? They walk in the room and it's like, oh, I feel better now. Of course, there's others that walk in and go, oh, no, man, we got to get out of here. But uh, what we're called in to do is, uh, is not to be a thorn for somebody. It's to be... A, uh, a time of healing. What is that small thing? What is that small thing you, can, you do? Some folks think that, well, providing a ride for people to come to worship is no big deal, but it is. It is to the one who needs the help. And you're doing it to the glory of God, or at least hopefully doing it to the glory of God, and then you see results. It's a great thing. Things as, as simple as Sharing your voice in a choir, or helping out with, uh, with a Tuesday night, or with the children's church. And you're saying, well, that's insignificant. It's such a small thing. You know, it doesn't count for much. I'm just kind of taking up space, and I'm there. No, the great thing is that you're with the kids. And they are learning trust. They are learning, they are learning what is good. They are learning what it is to have value. They're learning a wonderful truth, and that is that God in Christ loves them just by your being there. Sometimes having a, a tough love, but they know that you love them and that you are loving them because you love Jesus. What is that small thing that you have that Jesus is calling you to do? Are you willing to say, if you say so, I'll do it? Be ready for a great thing that will happen? Hmm. I pray so, because we're seeing it happening. 
In this congregation, we're seeing it through other uh, congregations in the area, that people are having uh, some marvelous transitions in their lives. They're discovering who Jesus is and how much they need him, even if they don't think they need him. It's a wonderful thing to see, just to speak a word of truth and to say, you know, Jesus, I love Jesus, Jesus loves me, and I want to be able to serve him in whatever, however way I can. And so I'm, I'm just here. I want to serve him. And just to go and have a visit, make a phone call, write a little note of encouragement. All these things seem small, but they are so great. Because that's what God does to build up the body of Christ, to make it powerful. So what's that little thing? Think about it. Hmm? Think about it. And then pray about it. And then have the courage to say, Jesus, if you say so. Amen.